Besides the reaction of organic moieties with carbonyl components uh, in the nucleophilic addition reactions, also other heteroatom-based nucleophiles can react with uh, carbonyl components. And one of the most abundant uh, nucleophiles that probably a carbonyl uh, component can encounter is, for example, water. Water has, again, lone pairs, so it can act as a nucleophile uh, in this case, but our carbon atom here is again positively charged, always the same deal. Look for the positive and the negative charge. We get this uh, addition reaction here. Our water molecule gets deprotonated. And in the end, uh, we have our uh, alkoxide um, oxygen formed here. This gets protonated um, by uh, another water molecule. So in the end, this is basically a shift of the proton from here to here to this oxygen atom and we are forming a so-called hydrate or this also called a germinal diol because we are having two uh, two uh, hydroxy groups attached to one carbon atom so it's basically yeah a germinal diol as the name already suggests and uh, this is of course um, quite interesting component and what you've probably recognized here in this uh, reaction scheme is that all of these reactions are reversible so with the same right that we could say okay our uh, anion gets uh, protonated here in this case we could also say oh maybe it gets deprotonated and then uh, maybe the reaction goes uh, backwards and this is actually what you have so when you put a carbonyl component into water you always find like partially uh, this will get hydrated and form this gem diol structure. And uh, so with this, uh, this hydrate then has like a slightly different reactivity than the carbonyl component because it doesn't have uh, this uh, carbon oxygen double bond anymore. Um, and maybe it uh, exhibits other reactions um, where, uh, for example, an alcohol group is needed. Uh, and the same step can, of course, be done also under acidic conditions. So in this case, then the, uh, the oxygen atom gets protonated first. So not first the uh, nucleophilic attack, but first the electrophilic attack, then the nucleophilic attack of the water molecule, uh, and then the proton is eliminated. And again, we end up with our hydride molecule in this case. Yeah. Um, and here you see some some of these equilibria uh, with numbers. So, for example, if you use propanone, so this is also called acetone, um, and you put this in water, then only 0.2% of the molecule gets hydrated. So it's actually a very rare phenomenon. Um, some notable exceptions to this uh, rule are uh, methanol, so formaldehyde. Formaldehyde in general reacts very willingly with water to form this uh, gem dial here. Um, of the formaldehyde, so the formaldehyde hydrate. And if you go to longer chains, for example, to ethanol, so you um, go from uh, this very simple aldehyde to the uh, aldehyde that's one uh, carbon atom longer, you find already a 50-50 mixture. And if you go to propane or propanol, um, then you basically find only or most of the time just this carbonyl component. Other molecules that also show this tendency to hydrate in water are, for example, trichloroethanol. Uh, here, uh, the, car uh, the hydrogen atoms at one of the alpha carbon atoms are replaced with uh, chlorine atoms. And this, uh, these chlorine atoms then have, again, a strong electron withdrawing effect. Uh, and so this carbon atom here becomes more nucleo, uh, more uh, electrophilic and then the water molecule can add and then we find a large actus active of this gem dial. In general um, you rarely find this uh, gem dial structure of the carbonyl components and this is then formulated in the so-called Erlenmeyer rule where you can say um, two there are very few organic components that have two uh, hydroxy groups attached at the same carbon atom because they would always eliminate water and then form the respective carbonyl component. And notably exceptions we've just discussed are this trichloroethanol and this methanol. These break the uh, Erlenmeyer rule, but in general, it's the carbonyl component is more stable in this case.